So you sold the item, now you gotta ship it. Let's just show you some real quick, easy, simpleton ways to ship stuff safely where you won't have any problems. Hey, it's done. Today I'm going to show you how to mail a few things here. And you can use the same methods to mail pretty much anything else that's similar in shape, size, and construction. I'll show you quite a few different items here, and we'll show you the simpleton way to do it. Now, most of what I actually mail, I mail with cardboard. I never ever send anything without cardboard protecting it from uh, either the bag or anybody else damaging it. So if somebody pokes into my package, it's going to hit cardboard instead. Now, I buy pretty much in bulk quantity 12-inch uh, cubes, 12-inch square boxes, so each side is the exact same size, or 14-inch um, specific sizes for a very good reason because they're easy to use for, geez, pretty much anything that we ship. Now, once I get the boxes, I cut them down into four individual sides of the box, as you can see. So this is just one box. I'll further cut these down if they're going to be like small objects, postcards, paper pins, buttons, any type of jewelry, small action figures. All of those sorts I ship with cardboard just like this. Most items, if they don't use this method, will just go in a box and just wrapped up with uh, some tissue paper or uh, bubble wrap or whatever you have out. Now, I buy bubble wrap in big bulk when I get it from end cuts, and that's like the leftover of a roll of bubble wrap from a factory that does it. There's a ton of local places and probably much most of anybody's area. I can get like 400 to 1,000 feet from anywhere from 10 to 20 bucks of bubble wrap. It's really, really dirt cheap. And I'm talking these massive rolls. So let's cut over and I'm going to show you literally how to wrap quite a few different things real quick. Easy, simpleton methods. Nobody can go wrong if you ship it this way. So with the boxes, now that I've got them cut down in the four sides, I just fold them over and I'll literally just cut them where the folds are. That's all you got to do. And then to cut them again, you cut them at the other fold line. So you really don't even need a ruler or anything to cut down any of the boxes to use the way I do. Again, then you'll come up with four sides here. Uh, and you can use them whichever way you wish then, obviously. So for like a postcard, everything that I get is sealed in plastic. So this is a postcard. Thanksgiving, obviously it's that season. This is a Dresden embossed, a uh, really nice one, honestly, Dresden embossed. Uh, circa 1910 postcard. I seal everything in plastic. I've got links down below if anybody's interested in the plastic that we use, but I just usually just buy the cheapest that's two mil for these. And then I just take one of the pieces of cardboard. I've already got one ready to go. I'll set it in here. And this folds real easily. So when you push your fingers in there, you can crease it to fold it. And then that is it. That's all I do with this. I've got my handy dandy tape dispenser here. And that's it. I use these tabletops. This is a two inch. They make a three inch. And I think there actually is a four inch as well too. So this works great. And what I do from here, I put uh, the actual label on the outside of the bag and just slide it into the bag. Um, I don't print until the end of the day because I use bulk shipping options and I just print a whole bunch of labels all at the very same time. So what I'll do is I'll write the full name and then the item code number on the actual uh, poly bag. That's what I do with small things like this. It goes in there, you rip off the top, seal it, and off it goes. Now like a button. This is a shirt button. You can do the exact same thing for jewelry, anything, action figures, whatever you want to do. I'll just take this right here, wrap it up in bubble wrap, take another piece of this, and it just literally is as easy as you can think of to wrap it up. Again, then I'll take my handy dandy tape, And that's it. This will go in a poly bag as well. Write the name on it and off it goes. Anything that's small, jewelry or anything else like that, like this action figures, I wrap the same way. If there are three and three quarters, if there are single marks or anything else like that. If I can't wrap them and fit them in a bag, a six by nine, it goes in a small box. 
You can get the small boxes from eBay with your free shipping supplies or order them locally or whatever you want to do with them. Now, records are super easy too. Now, I have a video just on shipping all this stuff too that goes into a lot more detail. It shows you how to cut the boxes and the whole work. So if you want to know the full step, every little aspect of it, I'll have a link in the description box. So to show you how to ship anything that is media mail in that video, again, link down below in the description box. Now, this is a 45. It's the Duke of Earl. Um, original VJ. I'm just taking sides again. Now these are 14, 14, 12 uh, boxes. I get 14, 14, 14. 14 squared are just fine too, but this just happens to be what I have handy. This is Simpleton here to ship. I take one side, make a little fold with my fingers, fold it this way. Now I also always do it so that the logo on the box is actually folded in so that you can't see it. So that's the basic gist of it. Last one here, I use three, goes this way and then this way. And then it's just a matter of, again, taking the tape dispenser out and taping it up. Now, if this is going overseas or something, I'll just put one more piece, one more side of cardboard on it. So it'll have four pieces of cardboard. So for comic books, magazines, photographs, sheet music, any of these sorts of things, anything that's flat that you want to ship that way, I'll use one side of a box, just one side. I take the one side, I'll take and score a mark, a spot right there with a knife, so it'll make a pocket. So there'll be a double fold there. And then I just fold it, do another score over here, and then I can fold it this way, and then fold it like this. That's all there is to it. Now if it's more expensive or you want to be safe, put another piece of cardboard around it, just like this, and it'll be double thick. If it's going overseas, I always double cardboard it. So I'll take a whole nother side of a box, a whole nother side, and just wrap it around this the same way I wrapped this. If you want to be a little safe without using a whole nother box, I'll just take another piece of cardboard here and stick it in here and just fold it right on inside there and it adds a whole nother layer. Now this is pretty darn thick. You'd really have to do a number to actually bend this up here. Now you can put some stickers that say do not bend. You can write with a marker do not bend. Whatever you want to do on the outside, that's your call on here. Again, I tape it all the way around. So I'm going to tape every single side on this up so it's all protected again. It's sealed in plastic. It shouldn't be bent. Again, it's all sealed all the way around and the whole works. So let's just zip this one up here real quick. This dispenser works on awesome. And that is all there is to it. Write a name on it, stick your label on it, whatever you want to do from that point on. Again, I can ship anything this way. Magazines, 8x10s, 12x14s, lobby cards. If it's a poster that's folded, even if it's larger, or a cardboard sign or anything else like that, I just use bigger cardboard. And I just put an extra layer if I'm worried about it being so large and uh, easily bent. So I just use extra cardboard. Cardboard like this, one of these boxes, if you order them directly from a box manufacturer, is usually under 70 cents per box. So depending on you know what you're shipping, with one box, if I'm shipping, say, postcards, I can ship 16 postcards for 70-some-odd cents in protection if I'm buying them in low-bulk quantity, just straight from the place. You can get them down to like 60 cents or less if you buy them in like a large bulk quantity if you ship a lot. So it just depends on what you're doing. But I ship everything that's flat just like this. Never had a problem, never had a complaint, never had to refund for anything that I'm showing you here. All my 45s have made it there in perfect condition, overseas or otherwise, my buttons, any jewelry, any action figure. So if it won't ship like this, it just goes in a box. I never use a bag or a poly bag or anything else like that, bubble or anything else like that. I wrap it with cardboard first and then just put it in a regular poly bag with nothing else. Never ever had an issue with it at all. So everything else from this point on would just go in a box with some tissue paper, bubble wrap, or whatever you happen to use. You can use circus peanuts or whatever the case may be. Now one thing I would say is once you get something like this that works, don't change it unless there's some problem with it. I ship everything this way and have for like, geez, 10 plus years. 
Never had an issue, never ever. These are solid. It's pretty stiff when you do it like this. There's four layers of cardboard that are stacked up against this piece to protect this comic book. So again, seal it in plastic, wrap it in cardboard, tape the heck out of it to make sure it's not gonna get ripped open, nothing's gonna fall out. Anyway, that's about it for today. Well, there you have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.